Hey, FMEers, uh, how are you? Um, I got a uh, task to do today. I'm creating a, a custom transformer, and I thought, hey, I'll record that because, um, you know, it could be uh, quite interesting, and it goes well with the blog post that we just put up about uh, creating custom transformers as well and putting them on the hub. So I'll see if I can get through creating at least the basic version of this and putting it on the hub so you can see what sort of thing is involved. So this came from a question on the um, forums online. It was about, well, it was about validating addresses. And one of the things that needed to be done was to insert a space character between different parts of an address. And we didn't really have a good way of doing that. So I thought, hey, let's create a new custom transformer to do that. So I'm going to create an attribute. Um, I'm going to call it attribute to process. And I'm going to give it the value high street. And you can see there should be a space between high and street. And what I put, how I figured this out was to use a string replacer. And I said, OK, it's the attribute to process. We're doing a regular expression replace. OK, now I look this up somewhere. I've got it written down. Um, OK, so it was something like question mark equals. And then it looked for the string. And then you put your replacement text in. So I put like XXXX in there just to see if it works. So let's see how well this works. There we go. Perfect. And so just out of interest, the, uh, the question mark equals bit means looking for this string, but not including it in the search results. So basically, it finds a start point of that. And and you can see, really, we're, we're doing an insert. We're not doing a replacement because it's not picking out any text to replace. Anyway, that's besides the point. Really, what I'm trying to do is turn this into a custom transformer. So I'm just going to put a junction transformer after that. And the reason I do that is so I've got an output port automatically when I turn this into a custom transformer. So I am going to do control T. Uh, I'm going to call it string inserter and category. Well, we've got a string as category. And if we're going to put it on the hub, which I am, then I should use markdown. So for now, I'm just going to say this transformer is for inserting strings in a given position. Um, we're using attribute references with published parameters, which is great, although I suspect we'll have to do something about that anyway. Okay, so here's my custom transformer. You can see it's got an input and an output. Um, it's called the string inserter, which is fine. We should just replace the input port with one called input. And the output one is just called output. And you can see there that it's exposing the attribute to process um, string there. So that should still work. Let's rerun that. And if we look at the output, yeah, that's still working. So what we really need to do now is to work out how to get the user's decision on what to process. Because right now they can pick the attribute but they can't say where it's going to be found. So I'm going to have to go into um, user parameters in here. And this is where it starts to get new for 21 because we've got the manage user parameters option. And I'm going to put in a, let's see, it's going to be text. And I'm going to name it string to search for plain text 
Yeah, that's good. And then in the string replacer, I should be able to open the text editor and okay, so I created it as a parameter, but I didn't expose it. String to search for. Okay, so I need to fetch that into I'm trying to remember. I thought I could do it here, but I yeah, there we go. Um, let's see. Interesting. I'm going to call it search string. Yeah, string inserter. I'm just try, I try and give my attributes um, the name of the uh, transformer in front of them so they don't clash. Let's see. I bet that's not... Ah, there, it's actually made it as a parameter, so I should have done it that way in the first place. Um, let's see if I can string to search for. And it's a text, plain text. Okay, so I should have just done it like that in the first place. Just created something in here, and um, then it becomes available. So that sort of creates it and exposes it all at the same time. Anyway, so, ah, well, maybe it doesn't expose it at the same time. Okay, well, let's assume it doesn't. So I've created that parameter string to search for. I'm going to have to put down a, let's use an attribute manager. And I'm going to call this string inserter underscore search string and that gets the value from user parameter is it just called parameter I guess it is if I rename it it should you've got to remember now normally I would go to here and try and edit it and you know it's not there but I'm looking for manage user parameters now and it's a bit different and again I'll give it a string insert a search string something like that I'll get there in the end string in search a strip search string and click OK and now that should let me search for street and hopefully this will still work yep there we go and I can also, um, I also want to do string to insert. So I'm going to again create another parameter text string to insert string insert. Uh, Okay, I've got to create it here. String insert, uh, string to insert. And again, one of the reasons I prefix everything with the name of the transformer is that way I can easily clean them up at the end if I don't want them. Uh, string to insert. There we go. Although I suppose there I could have just pointed replacement text to the user parameter directly. There we go. And if it doesn't contain the text, don't do anything. So now what I should be able to do is say insert yyyy instead of xxxx. And there we go. It works. Fantastic. Um, the only thing there is that it only does it on one string. Because I was thinking about this before. And it only searches for street, whereas if I've got multiple records and they have like, that was high street, maybe this is low road, well that's, I can't process road and street the same in the same transformer because it's not going to, to do that. 
So what I need to do, can that be multi-line? Yes, that can be multi-line, perfect. So I'm going to somehow say, I've got to split that out for some reason. Okay, so I think how this works is it's question mark. I, again, I've got to check this. Question mark equals that. Or question mark equals something else, which I'm going to say, I'm going to call it road, low road. So now it should work on both. I just want to make sure that it does. Ah, see, it works on neither. So obviously my code there is not quite right. Question mark, okay. I think maybe we don't need the question mark there. So it's street or road. Let's see if that works. Okay, excellent. So, okay, so I've got the format of that. So if somebody went into here and entered street road, so what I would need to do is say, Let's see, string to search for. I'm going to open up the text editor. I'm going to put bracket question mark equals and the close bracket around it. And then I think I need to do a string replacer to replace um, carriage returns with pipe character. So if I put another string replacer down, string search text to replace. I wonder if I can do a plain let's try this new line and replace it with Is that right? Or did I need more brackets in there? No, that should work. Let's give it a shot, see what happens. Search string equals street. Oh, I didn't. Um, so street, enter road. Uh, I'll worry about case sensitivity in a bit. Avenue, avenue, av, like that. Did it work? Ha, it seems to have worked. Fantastic. So if I put a space instead of that, there we go. And again, like I mentioned, I can clean up with the bulk attribute remover because I know that anything that begins with string inserter underscore is going to um, be an attribute I want to get rid of. And yeah, we just got attribute to process file. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I've created that <laughs> for using something in, regu in regular expression. That went uh, astoundingly well. I'm a bit concerned at how e easy that worked. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save it and publish it to the FME Hub. So we go into the definition here. File, export as custom transformer. Um, we normally do it linked by default. Norm I, I definitely do it by default so it can be switched around. But we do it linked when we put things on the Hub. And it goes in my transformers folder and it should open up like this. And so there it is. It's not particularly well designed right now. It's no best practices, but that's okay. I, I'll fix that later. Um, 
What I'm going to do is go back to the original one. And I'm going to embed that. I'm going to make this. A, I'm going to put a. Actually, no, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And I'm going to save this as. Uh, documents, FME, workspaces, and uh, workspaces, string inserted test. Yeah, that should do it. And flip back to that and open the containing folder. Oops, why does it disappear? Hate this new thing in Windows. You can't tell where the edge of that is. You're like trying to move that window about and you can't see where it is. Anyway, there we go. String inserter. So we've got a string inserter, a string inserter test. Let me fire up the hub. Hub.safe.com. Gotta log in. Okay, I'm logged in. I'm going to hit contribute. Uh, we've got two things on here, lab and sandbox. Lab is sort of semi-official. It's like actually going to be of use. The sandbox is like, well, you could use it, but it's a bit more experimental. I think this should be good enough for the lab. So now I just have to select the file. So that will be string inserter. And now I need my test workspace, string inserter test. And then I need an icon, which, oh, there we go, it worked, it ran, that's fine. I mean, the thing with that workspace, I didn't put anything in there to actually do a test with it. Where are they? So it's like, really what I should do is sort of put a tester in there and, and, and so what's the output coming out of here? Low road and high street. So really I should sort of put a test in here that says attribute process equals low road. Oh, there's the value. Or because otherwise it's not really doing a, a test. Excuse me. High street, there we go. And if it fails, we should put it to the terminator. And we can just say, translation terminated, failed for unknown reason. I don't know why it would fail, but there we go. And so yeah, I should really uh, use that as the, uh, the test instead. Test, because that way it's actually doing something, and it might actually fail. Otherwise, it's just running. So um, yeah, and I need an icon, but I don't necessarily have to put that on now. I'll create one of those later for it. Um, and yeah, hit publish, and it's as simple as that. And now, at any point, if we fire up FME. Even you fire up FME and type in string inserter. So I've got it installed locally. I would hope it will come up on the hub, but it's not happening straight away. Maybe it takes a while to, uh, to go through. Or maybe it doesn't like it because it's or installed locally as well. There we go, hub transformer, string inserter. There we go. So it's on the hub already, and um, yeah, that's how long did that take? 19 minutes and 26 seconds. So if you'd stuck with me to the end, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So that's how you create a custom transformer and you upload it to the hub. And I'll, I'll work on that a bit. I'll clean it up. I'll put some extra bits in there. But um, really, that's uh, that's about all, all you need to know if, uh, if you want to create one and uh, publish it. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you again another time.